Welcome back, everybody. There, I'll check that. I'll check. I'll check the. I'll check my headphone to make sure it sounds like it's me. No, that is me. Yeah. Okay. What if it wasn't? What Did you it, not hear your own voice? In well, your ears I didn't have own. the headphones. Yeah, right. On, so okay. I was like, I don't know what this sounds like yeah, at true. the moment. Okay. I've told you how my inner monologue is fucked. Yeah, because it sounds the same in, in, <laughs> as in real life now. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's good. It's good to walk around with. Yeah. It's like the upside down visor thing that I'm always yeah, talking it about. Yeah, it is. It is. Welcome back, everybody, to Caravan of Garbage, where we're going to do two movies. Two. Ninja Turtles movies. That's right. What many people consider to be some of the last live action Ninja Turtles movies. I mean, you're not wrong. <laughs> you're not wrong in a one equals one kind of sense. You're absolutely correct there, James. They are some of the Iconic movies. is are what they, you're looking to say. Are they iconic? They came out. <laughs> I would say that's stretching the definition, but I think these days, if a movie does come out, it's automatically considered iconic. Probably right. It's true. Mm. And this video came out. That's worthy of leaving a like. You don't know that yet. No, you're right. <laughs> How about we do, we'll do that one, and then here's another take. Well, we died, folks. <laughs> and we can put that in. And yeah. it didn't come out. The yeah. video didn't come out. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> so these are commonly referred to as the Michael Bay Transformers he movies. He didn't direct... Oh, you want to do that again? again? Yeah, I do. I do, actually. Because you said Transformers Shut movies. up, Mason. <laughs> I thought you were doing a joke, and I'm, I was stepping on your joke. Oh, but okay. actually, you were not doing a joke. No, we just... Nothing happened then. Okay, okay. great. So these are commonly referred to as the Michael Bay Ninja Turtles movies. Right. He didn't direct them. No. But he produced them. Yes. Okay. And they have his stink on them, don't they? They do a bit. They absolutely don't have they? their stink on it. You can stink. smell it. Yeah, yeah. You yeah, can yeah. smell it. You can almost touch it. You go, oh, spinning around. <laughs> Too much spinning. <laughs> <laughs> Why is everyone so glossy? Yeah. But only right. the good looking people? Mm. I don't know what's going on here. So we're going to do this. We're going to do Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, no subtitle. Yeah. We're going to do Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles out of the shadows. Yeah, man. Now, I had only seen Teenage Mutant Mutant Ninja Turtles out of the shadows. I'd seen it at the cinemas. Yeah. And I and, and look, we're going to talk about it next week, but I remember watching this, watching it and going, that's pretty fun. It's like the cartoon series from back in the day, but like live action. And then you were like, we're going to watch these. And I'm like, well, I should re-watch the, I should watch the first yeah, one. Yeah, watch it. And so I did. And then I'm like, oh, I have seen this. <laughs> have you? I watched the second one and I'm like, oh, I should go back and watch the first one. I watched it, forgot it. <laughs> <laughs> Which yep. I think is, uh, is uh, it's iconic. It's, it's iconic. I think that's the perfect word for it. Yeah. I feel like there is something to like or even love about every incarnation of the Turtles. Mm. And this is this is included in that, Mason. Okay, all right. Like you've got the original comic, which yeah. is like a gritty daredevil kind of Ronin kind of parody mm -hmm. situation. Yeah, yeah. The original cartoon has like a broader child-friendly appeal, which obviously shot it off into the stratosphere. Mm. The original movies were diminishing returns, but I still maintain the first one is like an excellent comic book mm. movie. And these ones, you've got Michelangelo and he's horny for April O'Neil and it's real creepy. And you I know, think that's iconic. <laughs> it is iconic. But I was going to say even like when you go to like the 2003 animated series, actually there's a live action series in the 90s which is pretty terrible the next mutation yeah sure. yeah but there's a 2003 animated series which is great i really like and i only recently saw this because my son got into it the 2012 3d series rise of the teenage mutant ninja turtles is very just good and cool i like that mm. a lot i like the look of it the movie's really terrific as well the thing about this one is i oh. like if we could talk about the design okay i like the, like the uniqueness of them, mm. how different they look. It's a little busy. I've got here, they have too much kibble on them. Yes. That's what they do. I mean, fashion designer uh, Coco Chanel famously said, before you leave the house, look in the mirror and remove one accessory. And I think Donatello, she was looking at you. <laughs> <laughs> she also said some other stuff and did some fun collaborations that we don't really talk about anymore. <laughs> but uh, I think I think that's wise words there. They've yeah. got a lot of stuff on them. I agree. I think some of this stuff has carried over, like Donatello might have a bunch of tech on him. I know we've seen that mm. before as well. He might be wearing a virtual boy on his head, He might be wearing a virtual boy on his head. And you know what? I don't even hate that they're fucking hideous. Sure. Like, they're really hard to look at. They look like they smell. But here's the thing. Mm-hmm. They're way too big. Okay, here's the thing. They're all 6'5". They're too big and they're too fast. Yes. I think if you changed one of those, the whole thing would feel a lot better. But like I said earlier, they're spinning and jumping and yeah. screaming through the sewers on their rocket skateboards or whatever. Yeah. Uh, and it's iconic. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's iconic. But if you if you made them smaller, the speed would make more sense. Yep. Or if you slowed them down, them being big would make more sense. But to give them both... You could even break it up depending on the turtle. Because Raphael, like now, in a lot of versions, he's the biggest by quite a lot. Mm. And Donatello's like the skinniest, Michelangelo's the shortest. And there is a bit of that in this. Yes. They are different sizes. I don't know if you, if you noticed. But the fact that they could just run into a scene and throw a fucking shipping container. Right? That's too much. It's four hulks. 
I what they've built here. I thought the reveal was... And they're bulletproof. They're bulletproof. I thought the reveal was going to be that they used like a crane to yeah. fling those shipping or containers. Or a crane. Could have used a crane. Yeah. Uh, but no, they just give, gave them a big big kick, I guess. They're basically invincible. There's a moment mm. later in the movie when they're doing a big action scene. What would you prefer? One of them to die every scene, James? Yeah, I would. Until, and we're four scenes in the movie and they're all dead. <laughs> and there's no more movie. It's just sad funerals. And April O'Neil's like, we should go to the funerals. And they're like, the turtles don't exist. You've made up funerals in your head. And then she goes to a mental institution. <laughs> Is that what you want for yeah. this movie? I mean, some of the comics are basically that now. Yeah. But also, in the original Ninja Turtles movie, eight teenagers beat Raphael into a coma. That's true. Where in this one, yes. they're doing a big action sequence on a mountain and Raphael's like, I can't do anything. My shell's been cracked. And then he just does a cannonball into a Humvee. <laughs> like, yeah. immediately after. Yeah. The first time we see them, like, properly engage... Mm. In the subway mission. They just paced everyone. Yeah, it's not like a stealthy, like, ninja kind of blitz situation. It's just a severe beating administered by four giant hulking creatures. That's right. Splinter's like, what did you go out? The- yeah, it's dangerous out there. Is it? Is it dangerous? <laughs> For who? Yeah. <laughs> Can no. we talk about Splinter? I'd like to talk about Splinter. Yeah. I don't know. Look, love Tony Shalhoub. Oh, Monk. TV's Monk. Yeah. My goodness. Look. First of all, fun fact about him, he loves torturing his kids, doesn't he? Yeah. He like, he's like, you kids have got a secret and I'm going to put you in a room and I'm going to make you stand in one position for 11 hours. And now we're going to pay some bills. That's right. We've got, we got an in-movie advertisement that I've got to read right now. I think... Uh, he probably tells the turtles that they can't go above ground because, you know, society wouldn't accept them. I'm pretty sure, actually, if they, they went above ground, social services would take them away <laughs> and send them to prison. Completely agree. Also, here's the thing. Here's a, here's a question. Maybe you can answer this question for me, James. Yeah. Why is this splinter obsessed with ninjutsu? So in the cu- I know why, but you go. Okay, so, well, I mean, the reason is because this movie's called Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, and if they didn't become Ninja Turtles, it wouldn't make any sense. But, like, in the cartoon, yeah. the, the old cartoon... Splinter was a human man yes. who's a ninja master, and then we, when he gets mutated into an ungodly rat-human hybrid, yeah, yeah, he teaches the turtles martial arts because that's his whole vibe, right? That's yes. his whole deal, and he's good at it. And in a lot of other versions, he was a rat yeah. who had a master who he basically learnt from. Yes, I mean, and look, that is stretching credulity a little bit. But, you know, you're absolutely right. Yeah, I mean, right. it started the, as a parody. Exactly. In the Mirage comics and in the, the live-action movie, the New Line movie, mm. he is a, he is a, starts as a rat and he is the pet of a ninja master. And then when he gets mutated, I guess he's like, he has a vague memory of it and, like, yeah. you know... He, when you know, the mutagen rem- kicks in, his brain, yeah, like, rewires. He, he remembers it's important and I think that makes <laughs> sense. But in this one, he's just a common garden variety all-American rat <laughs> yeah. who's just like... I learned to do karate out of a book. We all have to learn karate. It's some real divorced dad vibes. We're all going to learn karate together. And, and again, like I said, they have to shoehorn it in, obviously. Yeah. But I think in this context, it would make more sense if he was like, we're all going to have guns. <laughs> yeah. Hey, kids, look, I've found all these, all these guns when somebody does a murder and they chuck a gun in the sewer. <laughs> I've collected all the guns. We're gonna be the, you're going to be the Teenage Mutant Gun Haver Turtles. <laughs> the toys could have accessories that are like, remember the, remember in He-Man, like there was like a mossy guy and a smelly mm-hmm, guy. Mm-hmm. All the Ninja Turtles. These are all have, mossy and smelly yeah, yeah. guys. All the toys could have like slimy, rusty gun accessories. <laughs> yeah. you know? Like the Toxic Avengers. Yes, exactly. Slash Crusaders, Mason. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, it's just a weird wee brat, I guess. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. He's just a weeb. That's yeah. what he is. Because I know people have been like, well, Tony Shalhoub isn't Japanese and whatever. Which, look, absolutely. Absolutely. Believe that if you want. Sure. <laughs> but, you know, cast an actor at the very least of Asian descent, right? Or of rat descent. Yeah, but here's the thing. This splinter, as you mentioned. I thought of a guy, but I'm not going to say who it is. Who is. <laughs> but as you mentioned, you can say it. I'll cut it. You cut it. You're going to cut it out? Do you want? Okay. I'll, tell, I'll tell you later. Okay. All right. <laughs> yeah, you're right. But this splinter, as you mentioned, he's an American rat. Yeah. He could be whatever. Yeah. And here's the thing, Mason. A lot of things have been changed in this. And this was Michael Bay. Oh, name one thing. Oh, well, here we go. So this was what Michael Bay said uh, about in 2011, 2012, when the script leaked about kind of some of the ideas that were going to happen. He said, fans need to take a breath and chill. <laughs> There's more You're to too this. intense, Ninja Turtles fans. Settle yeah. down, be like you the... eight-year-old kids. <laughs> settle down. Be like the Transformers fans. Normal. Mm. Uh, he said, they have not read the script. So it wasn't the script, sorry. It was just some ideas that leaked. Our team is working closely with one of the original creators of Ninja Turtles to help expand and give more complex backstory. Relax. We are including everything that made you become fans in the first place. We are just building a richer world. Mm. 
Does this feel richer to you, Mason? It's very rich. Mm. Okay, here's what happened with Shredder, right? <laughs> okay. Well, first I was going to say, I, I also, what I, my favourite part of that quote is, is like, we're working with one of the creators. Yeah. Is, was it Eastman or Laird? We'll never tell. <laughs> <laughs> because, you know, all the East heads. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If, if it turned out to be Laird, they'd be like, Psh, Were they feuding at this point? I don't think they've ever feuded. I think they just... They went separate ways for a bit, They did, they? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. It seems like they were just like, God, we're tired of overseeing this and making so much money. Oh, God. man. God. Uh, I love it when we... St- you know, get together and we stack all our money up and see which is higher. But that's all we have in common these days. That's right. Good on them. They, they made bank. They sure did. And I love that. So the thing is, Eric Sachs is very clearly supposed to be Shredder in this. Yes. And was in early drafts and even the initial cut of this. Because you see during this mm-hmm. that when they include the original traditional shredder yeah he's only ever in a scene with like one other person mm. and eric Sachs always leaves the room right. and then a big armored <laughs> iron man shredder appears yeah right 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 and he Th- says i don't love business i only love shredding <laughs> yeah by the way if we're talking too much that suit is out of control it's man. too much <laughs> and it's it's also that vibe of like well i don't respect him anymore because yeah if i had a big giant powered armor suit that has like magnetic knives in it. I could take on the Ninja Turtles as well, I think. I think you might. You think you you probably would be right. Mm. It's weird because William Fickner is like, I'm doing mutagen and now I'm the mayor or something and I run business, but also I report to a a Japanese man in the shadows. He does the shredding. I don't do any shredding. (laughs) I do business, not shredding. Yeah, because so apparently Oroku Saki can somewhat be directly translated. Like the anglinized version of it is Eric Sachs, oh, apparently, right? Okay. And even in the French trailer, it's the same voice actor, and he is the version of the Shredder in the 3DS games. The Shredder. Yeah. Mm. Games. I say. I said games, I mean game. R- Royale with Shredder. <laughs> That's right, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, basically they made these changes for a couple of reasons. To appease fans, mm. and also because they didn't want to do like a Mandarin situation, which had just happened with oh, Iron yeah, Man yeah. 3. You, you never want to do a Mandarin situation. Also, you can't have two weebs in the same movie. No. Because if it's Eric S- Sachs and Splinter, just two old Americans <laughs> doing the, look, look at all the stuff I've collected. Look at my yeah. authentic armour that I got at the mall. My giant robot <laughs> armour that I got at one of those weird places in the mall that's got the wizard orbs and yeah. stuff, you know? And where's the like unique rivalry between those two? I don't know. It's just kind of a nonsense movie. You know what else I think? Okay. I think the camaraderie between the turtles it's too hectic and frantic, and I don't like it. That's more Transformers energy. I yeah, feel it like. is, isn't it? Look, and honestly, I know all teenagers are annoying, right? You spend two <laughs> hours with four, any four teenagers, you'd be like, God, <laughs> if only I or them could die. <laughs> Please. <laughs> But I feel like these guys are especially annoying. But the thing is, though, because there's four of them and they've all got their own personalities and they all have to say something in every scene. So that's the... As the the camera whips around Yeah, because at least, I guess, with the Transformers, if one of them just... You know, sits there stoically and thinks about murder. You're yeah. like, well, it's a robot, whatever. But all these four, they have to be. Talking. They got to be doing something. They got to be doing something. Got to be balancing mm. or eating a seventy-two cheese pizza or whatever. Yes. Whatever's going on. I don't mind the pairing of Megan Fox and Will Arnett. I think good as any. Why not? <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. I like both of them. And like the origin of the turtles being tied into April, that's been done before. Like none of those changes. Like I don't mm. really care about that. Again, I don't care how they change the law. But if it's like, if it's fun and not just like, God, this is kind of annoying. What an annoying movie. I mean, it's iconic. It is absolutely (laughs) iconic. And again, as I mentioned before, Mikey's real creepy towards April. I don't like it. That's his personality, I guess. But I'm like, look, he's a teenager and April's like 30 and raised him. Yes. So like, I think if she was going to take the leap to interspecies dating, she'd do it with a mutant closer to her own age. You know what I mean? (laughs) Sure. Like the rat. (laughs) Like Like the rat. I guess like the rat, sure. (laughs) (laughs) What other mutants are there in this movie, Mason? That's a good point. It's the rat. It's just the rat, yeah. So some of the outrage that I mentioned Mm. early on came from this because an early screenplay had the turtles be aliens from Dimension X. Oh, I remember that. Yeah, Yeah. I think that that was part of the... I think that was part of the Michael, one of those Michael Bay interviews where I'll just say anything. You think yeah. It was, it was probably right after the, hey, Ninja Turtles fans could chill. Mm. You probably went, and by the way, they're aliens. And that also ties into, it was originally just going to be called Ninja Turtles. Oh, yeah. As opposed to all the other words that go in that title. Mm. Iconic Ninja Turtles. I agree, yeah. Uh, Shredder was also going to be an alien, which he has been before. That's true. He's been an Utrom before, mm. and he was going to grow spikes. And, uh, and there was going to be... Uh, vanilla Ice was going to be in vanilla- it. They were going to bring back Vanilla Ice. Absolutely. 
for a second ninja rap, which he has he done, gonna, by the way. He was going to flip their house. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Gonna flip some houses for the Ninja <laughs> Turtle. He was going to flip their sewer. Yeah, absolutely. How do you feel about the action of this, though? I think the probably best sequence is the the mountain sliding bit. Because mm-hmm, yep. you can see everything. And that is true. They certainly jump about. Mm. Uh, I'll tell you this. Uh, I can't think nothing springs to mind. What about the end? When they're on the roof and they do they do a big leapfrog to kick Shredder in the head or whatever. That's all right. I mean, think about that scene. Okay. And sure. think about the scene at the end of the original Ninja Turtles movie. When they put him in a trash compactor. They put him in a trash compactor. But before that, yes. Shredder just, he just beats them up for 15 minutes. Sure does, Just yeah. takes it in turns yeah. to yeah. just slowly beat them up. That's true, yeah. And I, that, I mean, there's so much more emotion and depth and the choreography is just like mm. spectacular. And you know, all of those stunt men are dying in those suits. Oh, yeah. That's Literally. Right. Yeah, 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 yeah. I just... And, you know, it's like, oh, no, we're going to release the the poison cloud from Saks Tower. And then what? Which is basically the amazing Spider-Man mm. thing, turn everyone into little lizards or whatever. So they were going to release a big poison. Yes. And everybody would get poisoned and get sick. Mm-hmm. And then Eric Sachs would come out and go, don't worry, we have the solution for that. We've got this formula which will fix you. And they're not going to be like, yeah, but we saw the gas come out of your tower. <laughs> the poison gas. Mm. I don't know. It's just... It's nothing, is my wow. point, Mason. Wow. Noise. Like a rustling chip packet next to your ear, Mason. Yes. What this movie Some is. people find that very soothing. <laughs> Helps them go to sleep. I doubt just it. Chip, just a bunch of chip packets on their pillow. So it's time for, would you agree though? Mm-hmm. Teenage trivia, mutant ninja. Trivia? Trivia. Okay, great. This is the part where we do trivia. Yeah. Uh, so as you recall, and we've talked about this because we've covered all of those movies, and it was... Those movies, and you know what we're talking about. You do. So, Megan Fox was fired from the Transformers movies. Yes, she compared uh, Michael Bay to Hitler. Yep. And Steven Spielberg, who was on, who was the, one of the producers of those movies, did not take uh, kindly to that yeah. and uh, asked for her to be removed. That's right. Uh, and yet, on the Michael Bay-produced Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles movie, she's back. She returns. Why not? Well, they basically figured it out. Her and Michael Bay, you know, they came together and they went, we're still mates and whatever. And, and okay. he was like, you're still popular. Steven Spielberg can jump in a lake, they Whoa. said. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Has he done it yet? I mean, maybe. Yeah. Maybe he's got a lakeside house or something. He definitely he has a jump, lakeside house, yeah. Gets on a tire swing, jumps in a lake. Yeah. So basically they, they just kind of cemented over that and they moved forward. But here's a fun little thing, Mason. Mm-hmm. So when Michael Bay actually offered the role to Megan Fox, who is apparently a huge fan, Megan Fox. Of Megan Fox. No, she's a big fan of the turtles. I hope she is a big fan of Megan Fox. Yeah, you'd have to be, right? Yeah, I hope so. You've got to love yourself. Yeah, yeah. Come on. That's what that's what they always say on Drag Race. Before you can love the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Wait, hang on, I'll do that again. Uh... <laughs> What's the, where's the joke? How's the here? Bit, you know the bit where they go, uh, uh, love yourself before you. How the hell are you gonna love anybody else? You know that? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Hang on, let me think. Uh, they, you know what they say on uh, Drag Race? They say. Uh, what do they say? I've lost it again. <laughs> I'm going to find the thing. I'm going to find the RuPaul thing. <laughs> Luckily, we have infinite time, James. Yeah, I know, right? James, you know what they say on RuPaul's Drag Race? What do they They say, saying? if you can't love Megan Fox, how the hell are you going to love the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles? So true. Worth it. Completely agree. <laughs> what is this? Terrific stuff, Mason. Yeah, that's right. Imagine if you had just zinged out with that straight away. Well, no one will ever know. <laughs> you would have broken the internet. I would have broken the internet. In the shortened edit. It'll just, be seamless. It'll be, it'll be great. Yeah. But in the extended version, I'm going to look like a real All this. Ass. Yeah, great. Uh, so when Michael Bay actually offered the role to Megan Fox, he jokingly added a potential nude scene to her contract. There we go. Which she accepted, knowing she wouldn't have to commit to such a scene. Because the contract also stipulated that if she went nude, the Ninja Turtles would have to also go nude mm-hmm, and then be mm-hmm. full Ninja Turtle Dong. Excellent stuff. Iconic dong. <laughs> Iconic dong. Now, this is the part that I find really interesting about this production. Oh, yes. It's how the four Ninja Turtles, the actors who mo-capped them, mm-hmm. and some of them did the voices, some didn't. Like Johnny Knoxville is the voice of Leonardo in oh, this, yeah. uh, but he's not the mo cap man. That's interesting. You'd think he'd get into that. But I guess he's broken so many bones. <laughs> they probably couldn't get him into the mocap suit. Absolutely not. Yeah, yeah. And then he, they couldn't get him out of it. It would be the only thing holding him together. Mm. <laughs> uh, so Raphael is actually played by Alan Richson. Oh, uh, that's Jack Reacher. That is Jack Reacher. My goodness. That's second Jack Reacher. That would explain, though, why the turtles are so big then. Because they would have had to... <laughs> yeah, I guess. 
They would but, have had to rotoscope a Richson. But they're all they're all not that big. Yeah, I know. Like he's clearly the biggest when you right, see right. them on set. So he spoke to Collider a few years ago about this production, and he said it is the worst production that he ever worked on. Oh. From the start, he didn't want to do it, but it turns out that. Nobody wanted to do it, and he eventually mm. just was turned around on it because they were like, listen, you're going to be living and breathing this role. We're going to take you around the world. It's going to make you a name. And he thought, like, well, this is demographic that I'm not really, like, I haven't really struck at the moment. And they framed it like Andy Circus's Gollum, right? Oh, yeah, okay, sure, 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 yeah. But he was like, I don't know, it's, it's paid, like, next to nothing. And right. they were like, trust us. So anyway, he did <laughs> Trust it. us where from Hollywood? <laughs> Sure, I look like the Monopoly man and I've got these big bags with dollar signs next to me. But you tr- and that's, I'm not giving you any of that, but trust, trust me. Just trust us, yeah. yeah. So they weren't allowed to do any press for these movies. Well, yeah, because you, you know, you don't want to see the man behind the turtle. No, 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 no. Also, he voiced Raphael. He was one of the ones who voiced it, but whatever. But also, they told people that they were refusing to do press, right? Oh, rude. And because of the nature of the role... That being a mocap, sometimes voice role, there's certain stipulations which you then don't have to work into a contract, which means... Toilet breaks. None. <laughs> probably. So you don't get paid extra for meals. You don't get lunch. You don't get overtime. You don't get lunch? No, well, you can pay for your own lunch, oh, wow. I guess. Wow. Well, that's no lunch at all. If there was a, a not free lunch in Hollywood is no lunch at all, my friend. If there even was a lunch break. One time, uh, after a 14-hour day, the four turtles were left on set whilst every other crew member was shuttled away because their contracts and union stipulated that if they stayed longer, they'd get paid. Uh-huh. Whereas the Turtles, you could keep them for free. Yeah. So that's basically how they were treated. Wow. Yeah. I mean, and, they, and they built a big aquarium around them. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. Their only friend, a skeleton that comes out from behind a rock. <laughs> But this did pay off for the studio. I bet. Uh, On a budget of $150 million, it made $485 million, which is the highest unadjusted for inflation that a Ninja Turtles movie has made at the box office. So, you know, at least somebody made out big, Mason. Mm, I'm glad it was Hollywood, yeah. Me too, thank goodness. Mm. Um, But all in all, God, I don't know, man. It's It's just kind of a fucking mess. Yeah, I didn't... It's noise. It is a little bit, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. I not nothing. And again, it feels changed. Like you're watching it. Oh, hashtag not my Ninja Turtles. <laughs> no, no. I mean, like the movie itself is clearly conflicting visions. Oh yes. Sure. And also, like, very generous of you to say there were any visions at all. I think there was initially, <laughs> and clearly, like, oh, this is what the fans want, and oh, this is easier and whatever. Oh, they let's not commit to the their aliens thing. Oh, let's cover up their dongs. Yeah, God. You know. I want to see some iconic dongs, mate. Absolutely. Yeah. But uh, look, and and the end result is, again, like I said, a movie that I watched and then immediately forgot I watched and was like, better watch that. <laughs> so no, nothing jumps out. Again, I, I maybe my opinion will be different next week when we've watched the sequel. Yep. But I remember the sequel, it just has more cool, cartoony stuff in it. Sure. And Casey Jones is also in it. And he's like, well, I want to be a cop or whatever. Meh. Remember, that? remember that? Yeah, that so, iconic Casey Jones line. Meh. I want to be a cop. <laughs> he says meh. He says meh. Yeah. Anyways, you might want to see that video early, Mason. Maybe I do. Yeah, well, you can actually head over to bigsandwich.co where Ben Maybe and Maybe I will. <laughs> Maybe you can. I will. Where Ben and Lawrence always get the edit done early and it goes up there. But that's not the only thing there, Mason. What else is there? There's bonus podcasts. Well, maybe I'll listen to them. There's video game Let's Plays. Maybe I'll watch those. We did some Ninja Turtles games there recently, didn't we? Oh, yeah, that's right. Uh, There's also movie commentaries. We've actually got a... Maybe I'll listen to them. Maybe you will. There's also movie commentaries. We've got the original Ninja Turtles movie commentary up there, don't we? That's right. Yeah, that'll look so... A real new line classic, that one. Yeah, great. Grotty. Yeah. And, uh, of course, our podcast, The Weekly Planet, where we talk movies and comics and TV shows. I'll probably skip that. Yeah, that's fine. That comes out there Sunday, a day early, as opposed to Monday on its own YouTube channel and Spotify and whatever, where we talk the movie of the week and all the news that's going on. That's right. What's going on? We'll look at it. I'll look at it. We'll tell you what we think. Uh, yeah, maybe maybe by the time this is out, the new Ninja Turtles movie will be out. We'll maybe talk, it will. We'll talk about that. And we'll talk about it. It won't be. Oh. But maybe it will by the well, time. Well, in the future we will. Yeah, exactly. That's right. All right, thanks, everyone. Uh, grab that gem, you guys. We'll see you next week. Goodbye.